Hey guys, what's up? Joshua Sun here. Look, it's a message rarely preached anymore. In fact, uh, most church pulpits today don't even talk about it. But the fact is, is that Jesus Christ is coming back soon and this world is going to pass away. The bloviating big mouth on the screen, for those of you fortunate enough not to know, is Josh Forstein, who as we'll see has a talent for spouting more shit than a busted sewer line. According to him, churches are afraid of preaching about the end of the world. Okay. <laughs> Now, luckily for us, the Bible begins to tell us of signs that are going to warn us that we are living in the last generation. It's funny that you say that, Josh, because these other Christians thought the exact same thing. Scripture, one of the beautiful things about it is it proves its inerrancy and its accuracy when prophets thousands of years ago were able to foretell things that would happen, things that they would never know about, but they could see in the future, things that God showed them and they would write down. In fact, in the book of Daniel chapter 12 and verse 4, the Bible actually tells us that in the last days that many are going to travel across the earth to and fro. Now, this was written in a day when people wouldn't travel more than 10, 15 miles from their hometown during their entire life. Their only mode of transportation was a mule or a donkey. And yet the Bible says here in Daniel chapter 12 that knowledge would increase greatly in the last days. Now notice this. Almost every month I step on a plane and travel to and fro around the world. Do you realize that for thousands of years while they only knew horse and buggies and mules and camels? Well, that in one generation we have went from a horse and buggy to a supersonic jet that flies around the world. Think about how how much technology has increased over this last generation. Lying for Jesus again, Josh. Let's read the actual verse, shall we? But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Now let's compare that to what Josh said. In the last days that many are going to travel across the earth to and fro. Now <laughs> Many are going to travel across the earth, travel across the earth, travel across the earth, travel across the earth. What we just witnessed is a clear example of how Christians will cherry pick and manipulate their Bible in order to have it fit whatever interpretation suits them. In this particular case, Fierstein has added new words and thus new meaning to a verse that has nothing to do with transportation so that he could fit it into his childish narrative. Indeed, when one actually reads the entire chapter, it's clear that this verse talks about how the Bible will be studied in greater detail and thoroughly scrutinized. This is an interpretation that's also held by actual biblical commentators, some of whom explicitly warn against the infantile locomotive interpretation that Fierstein just squeezed out. Your first line of evidence, Josh, and you can't even accurately represent your own Bible. Makes you wonder why God relies on such incompetent boobs to defend him. Think about that for a second and begin to ask yourself if maybe we are living in the end of time. Think about natural disasters, particularly earthquakes. Do you realize that for a long historical period that great earthquakes only happened uh, once maybe every 50 to 500 years? But particularly over the last few years, well, there's been a tremendous spike. In fact, just this year alone already, as of February 22nd, 2015, 
Yeah, there's been 3,100 earthquakes already this year. Shouldn't that scare you? What scares me is how unabashedly stupid you are. It's like you're completely oblivious to just how moronic you sound, like you actually take pride in saying such idiotic things. First of all, Josh, you implicitly preface this segment with a distinction between major earthquakes and minor ones. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, there are an average of about 20,000 recorded earthquakes each year, and several million more that go unrecorded. We don't hear about the majority of these earthquakes because most of them are so weak at the surface that they can only be detected with the most advanced instruments available. In fact, there will probably be an earthquake by the time I finish this sentence, and nobody will notice. But you, Josh, seem to be under the impression that each of the 3,100 earthquakes that took place this year were strong enough to have actually caused a disturbance. And that's why you're a moron. As for earthquakes in earlier days having taken place between 50 and 500 years, yeah, I'm calling bullshit. In the 1800s, there were at least 50 recorded earthquakes with magnitudes between 6.3 and 9.0. While our technology improves and our ability to record these events gets better, we become more efficient at earthquake bookkeeping, so we have a more thorough record of recent earthquakes than we do of older ones. That said, there's no evidence to indicate that there's been any significant increase in earthquake activity over the last two millennia. Shouldn't you begin to maybe contemplate whether or not we might be living in the last days? The Bible also says that in the last days that there would be tremendous wars and rumors of wars. Does that sound like today? That sounds like literally every single period in history. I mean, really, you don't even have to do any serious research to see that. Just go to Wikipedia, type list of wars into the search box, and start scrolling. It's also worth noting that Josh again added a word that isn't actually in there. The original verses in Matthew 24 and Mark 13 don't use the word tremendous to describe the wars, or indeed any other word to qualify the nature of these wars. They just say that there will be wars and rumors of wars, and I suspect that Josh is more than aware of the fact that there's never been such a thing as peacetime, at least on a global scale, in effect neutering his prediction. This might be why he snuck in the word tremendous, because even he must realize that as our technology improves, our capacity to kill each other improves, and that wars, while less frequent today than they have been in the past, have the potential to be considerably deadlier. Even so, with the exceptions of World Wars I and II, the deadliest wars in history took place prior to the 1900s, with the Mongol invasions of 13th century Eurasia having had almost as many casualties as the deadliest war in history. That all around the world, that thanks to television and te technology, that now that we can hear of every war and every threat, and yet in the same days it says that many will cry, peace, peace. Well, look at the United Nations and look at all of these organizations. Look at all of the peace summits that take place. Look at all of the people crying for and praying for peace. The Bible says that there's going to be great war, that there's going to be great famine. Do you realize that right now, tonight, that 2.4 billion people are starving? That sounds like a great famine to me. Oh yeah, because there totally were periods in history where there were no famines, just like war. Incidentally, the United Nations World Food Program estimates that there are 805 million hungry people in the world, not 2.4 billion. I don't know where you pulled that number from. Well, actually, I do. It's just a shame that you won't pull your head out of there as well. Incidentally, the percentage of hungry people today is lower than it's ever been, due in large part to scientific advances that have had dramatic effects on crop yields, as well as an overall increase in economic efficiency. The United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization published a report last year stating that world hunger has decreased by about 7.5% over the last 20 years, bringing the number down to about 11%, whereas back in 1970, the number of hungry people in the world had been closer to about 37%. Point is, Josh, while famine is still a serious problem, albeit one that we're addressing with excellent results, it's nothing new, and it's actually getting better. This prediction is extremely unimpressive. Do you realize that the Bible says in the book of Matthew that in the end times that there's going to be Christians that are going to be killed and beheaded for their faith? Mm, yeah, that took place only a few days ago. ISIS... Is that starting to sound familiar? Nowhere in the book of Matthew does it mention that Christians will be beheaded for their beliefs. It just says that they'll be persecuted and put to death. Perhaps Josh was actually referring to a verse in Revelation that briefly mentions how Christians who have been beheaded for their faith will be seated on thrones once Jesus takes over the show. If that's what he was actually referring to, then he must think that the Bible predicted the barbaric behavior of ISIS. 
Once again, Josh, you're ignoring cultural and historical precedent. Let's keep in mind that the Bible was written during a time when such barbarisms as beheadings were commonplace, and let's not forget that the Roman persecution of Christians in the early centuries CE coincided with the point in time when it became standard practice for them to decapitate public enemies, like Christians, and display their disembodied heads on the rostra as a fear tactic. The Bible itself says that John the Baptist, and according to most biblical scholars, James the Apostle, were executed by beheading. According to church tradition, the same thing happened to St. Paul and St. Bartholomew, so if anything, this so-called prediction was just extrapolating from what was happening at the time. ISIS is nothing new, by the way. Islam has a rich history of decapitating people. Surah 47 orders Muslims to decapitate their enemies, and the historian Jabir al-Tabari recorded an incident where Muhammad had ordered the decapitation of as many as 900 people. It's not just Christians who they decapitate, by the way. Jews, Hindus, even the wrong type of Muslim are fair game. And Christians have historically been known to persecute other religions as well, including via decapitation. This sort of primitive barbarism persists to this day, not just from Muslims, but from Christians in places like New Papua, where it's standard practice to burn witches. Look, pretty much every religion has persecuted every other religion at some point, and that's still the case in the Middle East and in parts of Africa. In primitive and barbarous parts of the world, primitive and barbarous people do primitive and barbarous things. All this to say that, like earthquakes and famines, the decapitation of Christians happened at the time that the Bible was written and has been occurring ever since, albeit with less and less frequency. In summary, Josh, it's very strange that each of your lines of evidence that weren't complete misrepresentations of what the Bible predicts are pretty much the same things that have been happening since before the origin of Christianity and have been happening ever since. If I make the prediction that tomorrow the sun will rise, or that the next time I go to the grocery store I'll see a tabloid magazine with the word Kardashian on the cover, or that the next time I watch one of your videos I'm going to get migraines from the stench of the mental diarrhea that you discharge, that doesn't mean that I've had a supernatural revelation. It just means that I've noticed a pattern. In this narrow sense, these Bible verses aren't wrong, but they're not particularly impressive, especially since the incidence of wars, famines, and Christian decapitations have significantly decreased since biblical times. Now let me be clear, Josh. I think that your video is made just for effect. It has this self-righteous air of a whistle-blowing insider who's telling us all a secret that the rest of the world is blind to. The irony, of course, is that for a man who prefaces his arguments with the words, think about this, and do you realize, you do very little thinking, and even less realizing. Everything you do, and everything you say, seems to be done solely to entertain a captive audience, which is why I find your fifth and final line of evidence concerning biblical prophecy so amusing. It says that there's going to be an incredible increase in sin and Christians that are turning away from the truth, following teachers that have, uh, that, have tick, that just simply tickle their ears, that tell them what they want to hear. <laughs> the gods of heavy-handed irony fucking wept.